everyone. So I wanted to talk about this app that I've been working on and I decided to make an interface for it. And I know that OpenAI is going to release a similar application here pretty soon, but I just wanted to go ahead and release my version of it. And I was going to show off some of the features that is available right now in the app itself, but it does use the OpenAI API in order to basically transcribe your voice and also send back responses from the AI itself. So I'm going to open it up here and kind of demonstrate it. We see here we've got the main window and also have a configuration window where you can change various options. You can change the color of the assistant text. You can change the name. And this is just where it saves the um, wave that it picks up from your voice. And then it sends that file to be transcribed. And also I've got a few commands here. I'm still working on the video. I haven't really tested it much, so I mean, if you if you get this script, just use it at your own discretion. But as of right now, I've got a text command. So basically, what it does is when you say transcript or a message, it will automatically open up a box and allows you to paste in a large amount of text. If you say screen or screenshot, it will automatically take a screenshot of your current screen and then it, you can ask it a question about it or whatever you want to do and it'll give you a reply and this is just the image size for the screenshots so i you know i've tried to find a good middle ground you know so that it doesn't take so long to process the image and also this is appended to your message history so the, the more screenshots you take it's going to kind of slow down the response that you get back from the AI itself and um, the image path this is basically just where the screenshot is saved so it will be there for you to go back you can look at it and the quality, basically, this is just compression quality for the JPEG. Um, this is just where the chats are logged. And then message history, um, this is basically just how long do you want the conversation to be before the AI forgets what exactly you told it the first time you talked to it. So within 20 messages or so, um, or 20 replies from the AI, it will forget what you initially told it. You can go back and ask it, okay, what did I initially tell you? And then you can see basically how that works. And this is just the total amount of tokens between you and the AI. So how many tokens it can respond with, meaning that the more of these there are, the more tokens it will be able to use for each response. So if you want to kind of limit the amount of tokens that it can use, then you can just change this number to a smaller number. Right now, by default, it's using GPT-40. And by default, I have the push to talk key set to shift. Also, if you change any of these options in here, just try to keep the same formatting. Do not um, delete these words here because that could mess up some stuff within the script itself. And this is the system prompt. So right now I've got it set up to ask or to act a little bit more realistic when it's talking to you. So he'll, he'll talk kind of and make random stuff, random noises. Um, We'll say, I feel like every now and then, and, and you know, and stuff like that, just stuff that you'll get from random people when you're having a conversation with them. And this is the uh, default text to speech model that it's using right now to transcribe your voice. This is the default voice that it's using right now. If you go on the open AI documentation, you can change the voice to whatever you want it to be. So let's say, let's go to the uh, open AI documentation. I'll tell you what I'm talking about here. So if I can find it, but I did want to show this. This is uh, the current usage that I've put into it so far within the past, let's see, since, yeah, since the 14th of May, this is how much I've actually used the API. This is how much money that's went into it. And, you know, including Whisper, and you've got GPT-4, which right now we have to use Whisper in order to transcribe the voice and do the responses. But when they release the information for the GPT-4.0 voice model, I'll probably update this script and make it work 
with the 4.0 voice model and, and transcription instead of having to use the whisper model. So everything will be through GPT 4.0. So let's see if I can find the um, documentation here. I know it's on this page. Unless I'm... Okay, it's up here at the top right corner. So if we go down here and we click on the uh, speech to text, you can see here how things are supposed to be set up. And it should have a list of the um, voice models, which I might actually include them in the readme file because it seems like they're not set up to, to be found very easily. Okay, so here it is, the text-to-speech. I was looking at the wrong K. I'm, I'm stupid, sorry. But the text-to-speech, this right here tells you um, the different voice models, and you can listen to uh, each one of them and kind of decide for yourself. And I just like Shimmer the best. That's the one I'm currently using right now. But if you want to change the voice model, all you have to do is... Go here and just change the name. Make sure you use uh, lowercase for the name. So if you want to use Nova, just type in Nova with lowercase letters. And also you can change the user response text, which basically is just the text of the user whenever you type in chat. And you can change the name from user to your name or any name, it doesn't matter. And voice default. Um, Basically, it's just using the default model for the voice and then the whisper model here. Yeah, that's currently like the open one that they're using right now. So when you connect to the API, just use whisper one. I think there is a V2 or maybe a higher quality version you can connect to. So yeah, there's a large V2 if you want to try to get a more higher quality transcription. But the one I'm using right now, it works pretty well. I haven't had much issues out of it. So if you want to look through this documentation and change it to a different model, maybe the high definition model, you can do that. So, and that's pretty much the config and explain. And then here's the about page, which is pretty simple, self-explanatory. You know, it's got a link to my discord server and with the console, I'm going to currently just demonstrate how it works here. So I've got this video pulled up and I'm going to just ask it a few questions about this page. So, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. I can either hit shift key or I can press this button down here. So I'm just going to hit shift key. So uh, looking at my screen, can you tell me um, what video am I currently watching? What's the title of the video? It looks like you have a YouTube video open titled OpenAI's Stunning Next Model Coming This Year. Elon Musk on OpenAI Safety and Reanimating Bodies by Wes Roth. The video is paused at a moment showing various prominent figures from different industries. There's also an application window named iConvo, open on the right side of the screen. If you have any specific questions or need something described in more detail, feel free to ask. So there you can see it um, automatically took a screenshot and it sent my response along with the screenshot and uh, basically um, told me what I needed to know. So another uh, command that I have here is, can you please uh, transcribe the following text? Sure. Here is the transcription of the text visible in the image. One, Thomas Wolf Hugging Face, co-founder and chief scientist officer. Okay, I'm sorry. That's not Two, what I meant. Uh, I want Omode you to summarize a transcript of the Three, following Linda text. Linda Yaccarino, X. For Eric Schmidt, co-founder with his wife, Wendy, Schmidt Science. Sure. Here's a summary of the provided transcript. The past two weeks have been filled with significant AI news. During an open AI presentation in Paris, a new model codenamed GPT Next was teased, expected to be released this year. Open AI demonstrated impressive advancements, showing their ability to create videos, scripts, and voiceovers using AI technology, capable of generating full presentations in multiple languages. The discussion highlighted improvements in AI capabilities, and potential future applications, emphasizing the continued rapid development of AI. OpenAI CEO Sam Altman hinted at the potential of upcoming models, transforming them from simple responders to more advanced entities comparable to graduate students. Elon Musk also shared his thoughts at a Paris conference, expressing concerns about current AI safety and truthfulness. He aims for maximum truth-seeking and curiosity in AI development through XAI. Musk's Neuralink project was also mentioned, aiming to address brain and spine injuries with the potential to reanimate bodies. 
the overall narrative suggests a rapidly evolving AI landscape with significant implications for various industries and daily life. So you can see there, I can post basically the whole transcript of the YouTube video and it will go through, you know, everything that was said and you can ask it more questions about the transcript itself. You can ask it what are the key points. So for example, what were uh, some of the key takeaways from um, what I just told you there? Here are some key takeaways from the detailed transcript you provided. One, AI advancements. OpenAI is developing a new model called GPT Next set to be released this year. The model demonstrates significant advancements in AI capabilities, including multi-language presentations and video creation with AI-generated scripts and voiceovers. Two, AI potential. Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, highlighted that future models would be much more advanced, comparing their potential development to the difference between a first grader and a graduate student. Number three, Elon Musk's concerns. Elon Musk expressed worry about the risk of AI being trained to be politically correct rather than truth-seeking. He emphasized the importance of AI being curious and striving for truth. Four, XAI and Neuralink. Musk's XAI aims to create more truth-seeking AI models. Additionally, Neuralink, another of Musk's ventures, aims to address brain and spine injuries with implantable devices that could potentially reanimate the body. Five, AI agents. AI agents capable of executing various tasks are seen as the next significant evolution in AI, moving beyond purely cognitive tasks to performing practical actions on behalf of users. Six, impact on jobs and society. There's discussion about the future impact of AI on employment and society, highlighting a potential shift towards universal high income and meaningful activities as AI takes over more tasks. Seven, AI safety and regulation. The emphasis on ensuring AI safety and proper training underscores a significant concern within the AI community about the responsible development and deployment of these powerful technologies. So tell me a short story about this information. All right, here's a short story based on the information you provided. In the bustling city of Paris, excitement buzzed through the air as tech enthusiasts gathered for a monumental presentation by OpenAI. The murmurs grew to a hush as Sam Altman, the visionary CEO of OpenAI, took the stage. Tell me a he joke about this information. a groundbreaking development set to reshape the landscape of artificial intelligence. A sure, here's a lighthearted joke inspired by the latest AI developments. Why did the AI go to school? To get a little more emotional intelligence, because its artificial brilliance was making everyone else feel redundant. So you can see there, I can interrupt her by just simply asking another question and it will automatically stop the response and uh, send my my new question to her. So this basically has the same capabilities as the actual official application, except uh, I'm making it to where I'm going to be able to add more stuff to it over time, maybe newer features, newer functionality, something that I can constantly kind of add on to, and I might even change the way the MFIT the interface is actually handled. I might use a different front end. I'm still trying to figure out exactly what I want to do with that, but I just wanted to demonstrate it to you so that, um, you know, if you're interested in it, you'll be able to come to my Patreon, download it. I'm also eventually going to add it to a GitHub so that you'll be able to actually look inside the application and look at the scripts themselves and be able to go through and modify it and make your own script if you want. But other than that, though, I'm going to um, upload this to my Google Drive, and uh, I'll provide a link on my Patreon. Uh, all you have to do is sign up for my Patreon, and it's completely free for the first couple of days. You don't even have to donate. Um, you can donate only if you choose to, so you can cancel before the uh, subscription is over if you don't feel like donating and uh speaking of patreon you know i want to thank my current patreons so far the ones that are uh actually helping me out right now so alfred i you know i really appreciate it you you've donated to me for the last three months now that's great um colored deer you know it's great thank you so much for your contribution edward morgan I really appreciate it. Asam, I really appreciate your contribution.
to everybody that's currently still supporting me right now that's that's great i really appreciate it uh, you don't really have to support me you know you could you could just download it and left but you chose to stay and that's great so thank all my patreons and i hope i i hope i gain more patreons so thank you all very much and you'll be able to come to my main page here on patreon and you should be able to scroll down and i'll have a new post about the the chat app and you can go straight to the post once you sign up become a member and you should be able to download and it'll have everything included in order to be able to run so it'll be a folder like this it'll have all these files inside of it make sure that when you go into the config you can either edit it through text or you can edit it through the interface itself so when you go into the conf configuration tab make sure that you use your open ai key and I'll also include like a short readme file to kind of explain everything but if you have any questions you can also join my discord and then just come down here to the ask questions and you can ask me any questions you might have about the app itself but everything should be included inside of the zip file for it to be able to run so you shouldn't have to worry about having to build the application or download Python libraries, all that stuff should be included in the file. And all you should have to do is just click on the iConvo executable and it should run perfectly fine. Also, um, I didn't have any issues with my antivirus on this executable file so far. It hadn't really popped up on me or said anything to me, but if you do, have issues with your antivirus make sure that you allow an exception for the iConvo executable and there is nothing malicious inside of this code it all is just set up to basically work for the the app itself so i don't have anything extra running in the background or nothing like that i'll just kind of show you a brief layout of it but leave a comment below and uh, let me know what you think about it take it easy guys